Hello and welcome to the Stitch Create Love YouTube channel where you will find lots of crafty things. My name is Lindsay and I'm coming to you from Cheshire in the northwest of the UK where I live with my husband Stephen and our four year old daughter. On this channel I do a two to three weekly podcast where I show you the projects that I've been working on and uh, provide lots of other crafty chat but I've also started doing sewing hints, tips and tutorials. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back, it's lovely to have you with me again, I hope you're well and are having a lovely day. If you're a new viewer then welcome, it's lovely to have you with me, I'm so pleased that you've decided to join me for a tutorial because that is what I'm going to be doing today. I've had lots of feedback from my lovely subscribers, Thank Thank you so much for getting in touch with me to tell me what you would like to see by way of tutorials on this channel. Uh, dressmaking seems to be very, very popular and that is coming, I promise you that is coming, but that's something that I'm going to do um, over a longer series I think because there's so much to talk about. Um, so today I thought being as this is the first tutorial that I've ever done and I am a little bit nervous about it, I would start with something a little bit simpler that's accessible to everybody. So today we are going to learn how to make some lovely bunting. It's a great beginner project, but it's also something that you can play around with and make a little bit more complicated if you're a more experienced sewer. You can use more complicated fabrics, you can personalise and embellish your flags. So hopefully you're going to enjoy having a little go at that along with me. Now, if you have watched my videos before, then you'll know that I like to chat. And the feel that I'm going for with my tutorials is of a friendly, chatty, crafty cup of tea with a friend who's just passing on some some advice and skills to um, help you to work through lots of different sewing projects so I hope that you're going to enjoy what you see here if you do enjoy please do thumbs up give me a like and subscribe you can leave any comments you can send me a message on Instagram with any feedback please try and be as constructive as possible I am learning but um, it's always nice to be positive isn't it I will put timestamps underneath the video for all of the different sections that I'm going to be working in as part of this tutorial so that if you're following it over a couple of days or in a couple of different Different sittings then you can skip backwards and forwards as you need to and anything else that I think might be useful I will also pop in the description bar below for you so without further ado grab yourself a cup of tea and I'm going to talk you through all of the different tools and materials that you will need to make yourself some lovely bunting I hope you enjoy crafting along with me today Okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk you through all of the things that you're going to need to make yourself some beautiful bunting. So first and foremost, as with any sewing project, you're going to need some fabric. And this is the fabric that I'm going to be using to make my bunting in this tutorial. For bunting flags, you can pretty much use any woven fabric. So that's woven fabric as opposed to knit fabric that has a little bit of structure to it. So woven fabric with a little bit of structure, nothing too floppy or flimsy or drapey. If you're a beginner, then I'd recommend starting with 100% cotton, which is what I've got here. Cotton is going to behave itself. It's going to press nicely to give you a nice professional finish, and it's not going to slip and slide about too much under the machine as you're sewing it. A quilting weight cotton is a really good place to start. Quilting weight cotton is a light to medium weight cotton, so it's got enough structure for your bunting flags, but it's not too thick that you're going to need to worry about using anything other than a normal general purpose sewing machine needle. I've got some quilting weight fat quarters here. I bought these in Aldi when they were on um, part of their special buys a little while ago and I'm making my bunting for my daughter's bedroom so I've got uh, Peter Rabbit motifs on here because she really likes Peter Rabbit. If you did feel like changing it up a bit and you're a little bit more of an experienced sewer then you could use denim or corduroy, you could use upholstery weight fabric, hessian, calico, lots of different choices there and another thing that is great for bunting flags is old clothing as long as it's made of a woven fabric and it's got enough structure to it then you can use up uh, all your scraps of old clothing to make your bunting flags. You can make all your flags the same if you wish but I think it's nice to have a different print on some of your flags so that's the fabric that you're going to need for your bunting flags. You're also going to need some bias binding. Now bias binding, for those of you that don't know, is a long strip of fabric that is cut on the bias. For those of you who don't know what the bias is, with woven fabrics you have a, a lengthwise grain and a crosswise grain and they are woven at 90 degrees to each other. The 45 degree part in the middle is the bias and that has a little bit of give, a little bit of stretch to it. If I pull that you can see it's got a bit of give in it. And that's what we want for bunting string so that it will hang nice and smoothly. I do tend to find that the cheaper the bias binding that you buy, 
you are going to end up with something which is stiffer and more structured and that is what you want for your bunting string so you can see this is really quite stiff and when I when I crease this with my finger you can see it holds that crease really well I've got a whole roll of this here which I bought on eBay a little while ago for less than five pounds so it's really really cheap and as I say the cheaper the bunting sorry the cheaper the binding not the cheaper the bunting the cheaper the binding the stiffer it tends to be you can buy this by the meter in most craft and haberdashery shops and you can get lots of different colours and lots of different prints. So that's your bias binding for your bunting string. You're also going to need some pins, as always with sewing. Any, any kind of just general purpose pins will do. Don't choose pins that are for fine fabrics because you're going to need something a little bit more robust to go through something that has structure to it. So your pins. You're going to need something to cut your flags out as well. Now I'm going to show you two ways to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it with a rotary cutter, which is here. A rotary cutter has a round, sharp blade on it and you use it to cut your fabric. So I'm going to show you how to do it with a rotary cutter and a quilting ruler and a self-healing cutting mat which is the surface that you can see here but if you don't have those don't worry because I'm also going to show you how to make a template that you can then pin onto your fabric and cut out with scissors if you're using scissors to cut fabric you need a nice sharp pair of scissors these are dressmaking scissors and they have a nice flat bottom and they're really sharp all the way to the tip they also have a ridge in there with little sort of ridges and grooves in there so that they give you a really nice precise cut so that's your scissors for cutting your fabric you're also going to need some scissors for snipping threads and things so this little pair of embroidery scissors here is what I'm going to be using for that. That's just the case for my scissors. That's not something that you need, although it does look pretty. And then you're also going to need something like this. This is a point turner. Um, and this one is a Merchant and Mills one that I've got. Um, it's bamboo and you want something that when you turn your bunting flags out, you're going to be able to press right at the tip of them. If you don't have a point turner, you don't need to use a point turner. You can use a knitting needle, you can use a chopstick, basically anything that is pointed but blunt at the end. Do not use the tip of your scissors because they will pierce through and create a hole in your fabric. One more thing that you're going to need is some coordinating thread. I'm using a neutral coloured thread here but if you wanted to you could use a contrasting colour to give a nice bit of design detail when you're attaching your flags to your bunting string. I am going to be sewing the bunting on the sewing machine but there's no reason why you couldn't do it by hand if you wanted to if you don't have a sewing machine or you just prefer to sew it by hand you just need to use a nice short uniform running stitch. So that's all of the things you're going to need to make your bunting. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to cut your bunting flags out. Okay, the first way that I'm going to show you of cutting your bunting flags out involves making a template, pinning your template to your fabric and cutting it out with scissors. This is a perfectly acceptable way to cut out your flags if you don't have a rotary cutter and a ruler and a cutting mat, it's just going to take you a little bit longer. If you are planning to use the rotary cutter method, you might still want to listen into this part because making a template will help you to see how big your finished flags are going to be. So if you're not sure about that at this stage, then you can keep watching here. I've just got an A4 piece of paper in front of me. First thing to do is to fold it in half. So we're just gonna fold it in half. The reason we're folding it in half is because I want to make sure that I've got a nice line here that I know is straight and that is at 90 degrees to the top line here. Okay, what we've done there is we've basically created a center fold for the center of our bunting flag. The next thing that you need to do is work out how big you would like your bunting flags to be. Bearing in mind that whatever size template you make, it's going to be slightly smaller because there's going to be a seam allowance on each side when you're sewing your bunting flags together. This will become clear as we go through the tutorial. So we've just created a fold for half of our bunting flag here. I want my finished bunting flags to be six inches across. And so I'm going to count three inches across from my centre fold. My cutting mat has inch measurements on it. If you don't have a cutting mat, then you can just use a ruler. So I'm going to count one, two, three, and then I'm going to get a pen and I'm going to mark the three inch point there. OK, the next thing that I'm going to do is work out roughly how deep I would like my bunting flags to be. And I would like my bunting flags to be seven inches deep. So I'm going to count down here, this time not using half because this is going to be the depth of the flag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to mark another point here 
for our seven inches. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join those two points together using my ruler. I'm using a quilting ruler, but you can use any ruler that you have to hand or indeed any straight edge that you have to hand. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use some paper scissors and I'm going to cut all the way up that line. The reason that I say to use paper scissors is because those of you who are sewers or dressmakers or who know anything about cutting out fabric with scissors will know that if you use fabric scissors to cut paper then this will simply blunt the blade so you want to just be using some paper scissors here I've just got a pair of kitchen scissors that I'm using and then once you've cut your flag out you can open it out and that is going to be your bunting template. Now, I mentioned about seam allowance before. The seam allowance that we're going to be using within this project is roughly a centimetre or three eighths of an inch. So you've just got to bear in mind that you're going to lose a centimetre all the way around when you're sewing your bunting together. If this is not quite the right kind of triangle shape that you would like for your bunting, then you can play around with it if you want a fatter triangle, if you want a shorter triangle, whatever it is that you want. But that is how you are going to make your template for your bunting flag. OK, now that we've got our template cut out, we want to use our scissors to cut out our bunting flags from our fabric. So to do this... We're going to take our fat quarter of fabric. Um, I have put the iron over this. There's a couple of little creases still in it, but they will come out when we're making and pressing all of these things. So we're going to fold our fabric in half. The way that we fold our fabric in half is we bring the selvage edges together. The selvage edge of the fabric are the edges that don't fray. See here, this is fraying. So this is the raw edge and this is the selvage. So bring your selvages together. And then you have... A nice fold down the centre and because we've got good strong scissors here we're going to fold it again into quarters okay because our scissors will comfortably cut through all four layers of fabric then you're going to get your bunting flag and what you're trying to do is you're trying to place it on your fabric in the most economical way so we're going to cut one out in this way and then we're going to take that and we're going to turn it and we're going to pop it there because that way you'll definitely get two flags out of your fat quarter if you try to do it the other way then you might end up with it poking off the end when you're pinning your flag onto your fabric what you want to be doing is popping the pin into the fabric until you feel the cutting mat or whatever surface surface you are using underneath and then with your hand push it back up again and it will come through for you. Don't go underneath the fabric because what will happen is then you're distorting the fabric and your shapes will never quite be right. Not quite so important for bunting flags, but if you want to go on to dressmaking, that is really important. Then once you've got pins around your template so that it's not gonna go anywhere, you can get your scissors to cut it out. When you're cutting out, I'm just gonna move the fabric out of the way. You want to keep your scissors flat on the cutting board. This flat base here means that you can keep them flat. And as you move along, you're not lifting the scissors up off the board. So your scissors will be doing this as you're cutting. OK, when you cut, you want to cut right up to the line and you want to be keeping your blade off to the right of your template it's just easier to cut so once you've cut all your flags out if that is the cutting method that you're using then we can think about starting to sew them together if however you're going to be using a rotary cutter and cutting mat to cut out your flags I'm going to talk you through how to do that now okay now I'm going to show you a nice quick and easy way to cut out your bunting flags using your rotary cutter your ruler and your cutting mat the template for our bunting flags that we made is seven inches deep by six inches wide. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my fabric into seven inch strips. With your cutting mat, you can use the inch measurements to help you with that, or you can also use the measurements on your ruler if you prefer. I'm going to use the measurements on my cutting mat. Now, please remember that I'm left handed. So if you're right handed, then you might be doing things slightly differently. So I'm going to cut from this side, whereas if you were right handed, you'd be starting at the other end of the fabric. So we're going to measure across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is the line that I want to cut. So I'm going to line up my ruler 
with the line there that I want to cut and then I'm going to get my rotary cutter and I'm going to go bottom to top and I'm going to cut my fabric into a strip and sometimes you do get little bits of stray uh, thread that stick there. To be honest my blade could probably do with being changed, it's been on there a while. So that's the first one. Now if you were doing this at home yourself then you don't necessarily need to move the fabric along to get your other seven inch. You can just measure along and then you can pop it down and you can cut. But because I want you to see what I'm doing, I'm going to show you again by moving the fabric along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm counting at the top, but you can see the lines are there at the bottom as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's because I want you to see me cutting it right from the bottom up this time. So here's my line that I'm gonna be cutting. And again, just use your rotary cutter and cut into a seven inch strip. And I think I'm probably gonna get one more out of there. So let's show you at the top again, how I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's my line that I want to be using and line it up with my ruler and then bottom to top all the way up I'm going to cut it. Obviously if you are right handed you would be cutting it the other way so you'd have your ruler this side and you would have your rotary cutter in this hand. So that's cutting your fabric into seven inch strips. Now we've got our seven inch strips of fabric cut out and I'm using a fat quarter so I've got three seven inch strips out of that and I've placed them one on top of the other one two three and I've got seven inches from top to bottom if you're using fabric off the roll or off the bolt then you may have more strips than this and I would say you're probably going to be able to cut through up to about four at a time using your rotary cutter depending on how sharp your blade is First thing that we want to do is make sure that the top of our fabric is lined up nice and neatly in a straight line with the straight line on our cutting mat. The next thing that we're going to do is just make sure that we've got a nice straight edge down this side. So you can see I've got a bit of overlap here and a bit of overlap here. I'm going to use the straight line on my cutting mat to make sure that this is nice and straight. So again, I'm just gonna line it up. If you're right-handed, obviously you'll be working from the other direction and I'm going to cut it for you. So I've got a nice straight edge there. Now, remember our template that we made. We're not using this in the cutting out, but I keep referring to it just so that you can see how the finished flag is going to look. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and start cutting these out. Now obviously I can't cut a flag out from the beginning of my fabric without losing this little bit. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So from the bottom of my fabric, I'm going to count across half the width of my flag because I want to be able to cut my entire flag from the top and I want to get rid of this kind of half distance at the bottom. So I'm going to count along three inches, one, two, three, I'm going to pop my ruler at the three inch mark at the bottom here and I'm going to line it up with the top corner and then I'm going to make a cut. Okay, now I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to measure one, two, three, four, five, six, which is the width of my flag. I'm going to pop my cutting ruler at the six inch point here and at the bottom corner of my flag, and I'm going to make another cut. I'm pressing really quite hard with that rotary cutter, that's what you need to do. And then I've got three flags there. Then I'm gonna to go to the bottom and I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, I'm gonna bring my cutting ruler in to the six inch mark, and I'm gonna match it up with the top or what's actually going to become the bottom corner of my flag and I'm going to make another cut to there. Make sure that the uh, safety guard is off your rotary cutter whilst you're doing this and I've got a little bit of thread there that's stuck. And you're just going to carry on doing that. You're going to count six across the top and do a cut. So let's do another one for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to line it up with the bottom point there and I'm going to make a cut 
and then you're going to go down to the bottom. And by doing it this way, it's much quicker than having to turn your fabric around every time you're cutting. And by cutting through multiple layers of fabric, you're cutting lots of pieces at a time. OK, I just paused filming there just to make the, the last cut, to cut out the last set of three of my flags, because the angle over here is a little bit awkward because of the way that I'm filming this um, overhead. So I've got my flags cut out of that fat quarter there. I'm going to go off now and I'm going to cut um, the remaining flags out of the other fat quarters that I've got. So you can just keep going until you've got enough flags to fill up your bunting or until you've used as many of the fabrics that you want to use. Just remember that our bunting flags are going to be double sided. So two of these is going to make one flag. So if you want to go off and get your flags cut out now, you can rewind the video as many times as you need to to watch the techniques that I've showed you. But this would be a good time to pause watching the tutorial and have a go at cutting out your flags. So here we are with all of our lovely bunting flags cut out and it's much quicker if you do have your um, rotary cutter and your cutting ruler and your cutting mat but you could have done this just as easily with scissors it's just going to take you a little bit longer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing our flags together. When you're popping your flags together, it's really up to you whether you want to have the same print on the front and the back of the flags or whether you want to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to mix it up because I think it's just nice to do that. So what I've done is I've sorted my flags into piles. I've got four different prints and so I've sorted them into four different piles just because it's easier from the point of view of putting them all together. And what we're going to do is we're going to put two flags together and we're going to put right sides together. So the right sides of my fabric are going to go together like this. Let me just pull that up into the shot and move those out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. So we've got our flags there, right sides together. Now if you're a super confident sewer who has sewn a few different things in their time, then you might not need to pin this together. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with putting some pins in. So again, just popping the pins through, like we said before, pushing down to the cutting mat and then pushing back up again. You'll notice that I'm pinning across. What I'm trying to do is pin in the direction that I'm going to be sewing. So I'm going to pin across because I'm going to be sewing down here as opposed to pinning lengthwise. So let me just move that one over to show you. The reason that I'm doing that is because if you're sewing down here and you forget to take the pin out and the sewing machine needle hits the pin, the sewing machine needle will not break. If your pins are in, in the other direction and your sewing machine needle hits the pin here, then the sewing machine needle is going to break. However, I would encourage you to get into the habit of taking your pins out as you're sewing. Because I'm left-handed, I've popped them in this way because as I'm sewing, I'm gonna to wanna to use my left hand to take the pin out. If you are right-handed, let's just get another pin out of here. If you're right-handed, you're gonna to wanna to pin across this way because it's gonna be easier for you to take your pins out that way. So it very much depends on which way you work. So we're going to take this over to the sewing machine now and we're going to sew. We're going to start at the top. We're going to sew all the way down to the bottom point. We're going to turn it at the bottom and I will talk you through how to do that. And then we're going to go all the way back up the other side, all the way back up to the top again. The seam allowance that we're going to use is roughly a centimetre and I'll explain why I say roughly a centimetre or three eighths of an inch in a minute. The seam allowance, for anybody that doesn't know, is the distance between the raw edge of your fabric here and the stitching line that we're going to create. So the distance between our stitching line and the raw edge of our fabric is going to be about one centimetre. But I'm going to take you over to the sewing machine so that I can explain that properly for you. OK, so we're over at the sewing machine and um, today I'm using a Janome machine. This is uh, one of the machines that I own, um, the SMD 3000 model, and it is a computerised machine. But whatever sewing machine you have, you'll be able to get on with the techniques here. And I will talk to you because there is a slight difference in one technique on a computerised machine and a mechanical machine. So I'll talk to you about that. I'm going to do a separate video on different types of machine and how to thread up your machine and how to wind your bobbin and the difference between top loading and front loading bobbins. I'll do all of that in a separate video but for now we're going to get on with sewing our flags together so I've brought my flag over here I'm just going to pop the machine off for a minute because the light will make the video go a little bit funny because of the angle that I'm at at the moment so I've popped some pins in the other side of my flag and I've popped them the opposite way round to here because as I turn my flag around and sew I'm going to be sewing back in this direction 
So we talked about our seam allowance being roughly a centimetre. And the reason that it's going to be roughly a centimetre is because we are going to line up the edge of our flag, the raw edge of our flag, with the edge of our presser foot. This is our presser foot here and I've got the zigzag foot on my presser foot. So line up the raw edge of your fabric with the edge of your presser foot. What that means is when the needle goes down into your fabric, the distance there is going to be roughly a centimetre or three eighths of an inch. Now if I just move that fabric slightly out of the way, you can see there that marker on the machine is three eighths of an inch. It's not quite there, but it's as, it's as near as it can be. Depending on your machine, you might find that you're a millimetre away from a centimetre or a millimetre over a centimetre. It really doesn't matter. I think as a beginner, the easiest thing you can possibly do is just line up the raw edge of your fabric with the side of your machine foot there, the, the foot that's on the presser foot of your machine. And that is how we're going to make sure that we sew in a straight line. We're going to keep the raw edge of our fabric in line with the edge of our foot at all times. Okay, I've now got the sewing machine on, I've got my fabric lined up here and I'm ready to sew. When we start sewing, we're going to go forwards a few stitches and we're going to go backwards a few stitches and then we're going to come forwards all the way down to the bottom of our flag. The reason that we do this is to secure the stitches that we make at the top of our bunting flag. Depending on the type of machine that you have, and again I'm just going to switch it off for a moment because the light, um, the bulb under the machine will, will flicker a little bit here on the camera. Depending on the type of machine you have, you will either have a button that looks like this one here with the arrow um, which will do your back stitches for you, or if you have a mechanical machine you're likely to have some sort of um, pull down lever here that you need to hold down for your machine to go backwards. So if I just switch my machine back on, you can see what will happen. I'm going to press this button after I've gone forwards a few stitches. A computerized machine has a stitch limiter on it so that you can control the speed. I'm going to turn it right down to the lowest speed because I want you to see what I'm doing as I'm doing it here. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to do a couple of stitches forwards. If I can just find my foot pedal on the floor, so a couple of stitches forwards and then I'm going to stop and then I'm going to hold down my button here and I'm going to do a few stitches backwards. And you'll notice that whilst I was doing those stitches, I didn't have my hand on the fabric. If I wasn't holding the camera, I would have had my hand over here, my left hand over here studying things. But that's important to realise because your feed dogs in your machine, which are underneath your presser foot here, they will guide your fabric through your machine. They will pull it through. So you don't need to be pushing or pulling at any time. That's going to take it through nice and smoothly. All you need to be doing is using your left hand to steady the fabric as it goes through the machine. So let's carry on. And as you can see, we're going to carry on now going forwards. Let me see if I can get in a bit closer there for you. So we're going forwards and we're keeping the raw edge of our fabric in line with the presser foot at all times. So I'm coming up to a pin there, so I'm going to take the pin out and pop it in my pin cushion over here. And then I'm going to carry on sewing all the way down. So I'm just going to come out a little bit there so that you can see what's happening. And I'm not going to speed it up at all at this point. In future tutorials, I will sew a little bit more quickly for you, but I just think it's important for you to see the speed that I'm sewing at here. I'm hoping that you can hear me over the machine. If not, I'll have to record a voiceover later. Okay, I've got another pin there, so I'm going to take the pin out, and then I'm going to keep going. Now, as you come towards the point of your bunting flag, you need to judge when you're about a centimetre away from the bottom, because we want our seam allowance to be consistent, so we'll keep going. I'm just going a little bit off there, but I'm just going to push it back. This is because I'm sewing with one hand, which is not what I normally do. I'm going to stop there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test whether or not I have reached the correct point. Because this is a computerized machine, I have a needle up and a needle down button here. So I'm going to press that button and my needle is going to come down. If you don't have a computerized machine, then you will just go to your hand wheel and you will turn your hand wheel until your um, needle goes down into your fabric. Once your needle is down into your fabric, you can get hold of your presser foot lever, which is under here for me, and you can lift your presser foot up and your needle is in your fabric 
So that means that your fabric is not going to go anywhere and then you can turn it around. And that is how you will sew around a corner. Now if I put my presser foot back down, you can see that there's an overhang here, there's an overlap. So I haven't reached a point at which I'm a centimetre away from the edge, so I need to lift the presser foot back up. I need to turn the flag back around, I need to line it up with the edge of my presser foot and I need to do a couple more stitches and then I need to try again. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to see if I'm in the right place and you can see there that I am so I'm going to pop the foot back down and I'm just going to carry on going, steadying my fabric as it goes through the machine. And then I'm going to go up to the pin. I'm going to take my pin out of my fabric, which is there, and then I'm going to carry on again. And I'm just using my hand to steady the fabric as it goes through the machine. I'm keeping the raw edge of my fabric lined up with the edge of my presser foot at all times, which means that I will get a nice, neat, straight line of stitching. So I'm coming up to another pin here now. The reason that my needle is now staying down in my fabric is because this is a computerised machine and I've told it to be down so every time I stop the needle will now be down in my fabric. If you have a mechanical machine it could end up anywhere but you can just wind the hand wheel towards you to get the needle in or out of your fabric. Okay, I'm coming back up to the top here. This is just the loose edge of the um, thread from over here. So I'll just move that out of the way. And then once you come pretty much to the end, I'm gonna stop again, and then I'm gonna go back to my uh, back stitch button over here. And I'm gonna go backwards some stitches, and I'm gonna go forwards again. And that is it. So you can take your needle out. I'm going to use the button, but again, if it's a mechanical machine, wind the hand wheel. Out it comes, lift your presser foot up, and then you can take it out from underneath the machine and you can trim your threads off there. So there is my first bunting flag sewn together. So you can see we've got a nice neat line of stitching here because we used our presser foot to help us as a guide. I've got my um, back stitching at the beginning to secure my threads and I've got exactly the same at the end. So all you need to do is repeat that for all of your bunting flags until they are all sewn together. Okay, once you have sewn all of your bunting triangles together, we need to turn them through to the right side. But before we do that, we want to make sure that when we turn them through, we're going to be able to get a nice crisp point. If you can just see here, we've got our stitching line where we came down and then we turned and we went back up the other side. If we turn it through to the right side and leave all of this extra bit of seam allowance here, you're never going to be able to get a really nice crisp finish because all of this is going to be trying to sit within this part of the flag and it's going to be bulky. So in order to get a nice crisp finish, here is what we're going to do. We're going to take our scissors and we are going to put our thumb across the top of our stitches, really, really close to our stitches. Then we're going to take our scissors and we're going to snip as close to our thumb as we possibly can without hurting ourselves. And now you can see what we've got is we've snipped the fabric really close to the stitching line. Then we need to turn, I'm just going to move the scissors out of the way, we need to turn our bunting flag through to the right side. Like so. So all that beautiful straight stitching that you did has produced a nice neat seam for you. But what about this point here? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take our point turner that we spoke about when I told you the equipment that you were going to need at the beginning, and we're going to push our point turner into the flag and through to the end here, like so. And if you persevere, you will end up with a really nice crisp point. It's actually really difficult doing this on camera. Normally I'd be right up close to where I'm doing it. There we go. You can see there, you've got a nice crisp point 
point. What we're going to do is we're going to repeat that for all of our bunting flags and then we're going to take our flags over to the ironing board and we're going to give them a really nice press to give them a professional finish. If I just pop it down there you can see that you're going to have some nice neat flags ready to hang on your bunting string. Okay so now I've pressed all of my bunting flags so you can see we've got the nice sharp points at the tips and we've got really nice crisp side uh, edges here on all of our flags as well. So we can think about starting to attach them to our bunting string but before we do that you'll notice that along the top of all of the flags you've got these little kind of triangular sticky outfits so we need to get rid of those and you can do that in one of two ways. You can either do it using your rotary cutter and your cutting mat so you can just get your rotary cutter, line your ruler up along the top and give them a trim off with the rotary cutter. Make sure that you're cutting straight, obviously. So you can cut it off that way so that you have a nice flat point at the top. Or you can just take your scissors and you can snip the points off with those. Either way is fine, but you'll need to do that to all of your bunting flags before you think about attaching them to your string. Once you've trimmed all of the top of your bunting flags to be nice and straight, then you can think about attaching your string, which is of course where our bias binding comes in. Now to show you how this is gonna work, I've cut just a strip of bias binding because it's easier for me to show you. So bias binding, when you buy it, you will find that the top and bottom edges have been folded over. So there's the top edge folded over and the bottom edge folded over. So you've got two folds at top and bottom of your bias binding here. What you need to do to attach it to your string is you need to fold it in half. So I'm just going to fold it in half for you. And it'll be nice and easy to do because your bias binding will take the crease. So you can just finger or thumb press it all the way along the top. So I'm going to do that all the way along my strip. You don't have to do it all the way along to start with. Just do it far enough along enough so that you can start thinking about attaching the first of your bunting flags. So there we go. That's mine folded in half there. And what we want to do is we want to wrap the bias binding around the bunting flags and to do that if you open it out and then the central crease that you've just created is where you want to be lining up the top of your bunting flag so the crease that you've just created you want to line up the top of your flag there and then you want to fold the bias binding over the top and that is how all of your flags are going to sit on the bunting string now you're obviously going to want to leave a little bit of string at the end so that you've got uh, somewhere to be able to hang your bunting. So I'm just going to take that out and move it along to show you. So we're going to leave a little bit at the beginning and then we'll pop it back in. Again, lining up the top of our bunting flag with the crease that we've just made. And then you can pop a pin in there. I'm just going to bring my hand around here. You can pop a pin in there just to keep it in place. So when we sew this, we are going to be sewing in this direction. So I've pinned across again, you can see there. So that's your first flag. Now, it's up to you how big a gap you want to leave between your flags. You can, if you want to, position them right next to each other like this. She says, fiddling around with her flags. There we go. You can have them right next to each other so that the tips of your flags are touching or if you prefer you can leave a small gap. I wouldn't leave too large a gap. I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to just pop another pin in there like so. And this is how you're going to attach all of your bunting flags to your bunting string but I would advise pinning two before you take your flags over to the sewing machine and then once you've sewn one at the machine you can think about attaching another one and I'll show you that over at the sewing machine. We're going to take these over to the sewing machine now and we're going to start attaching our flags to our string using a small straight stitch. Just before I take these flags over to the sewing machine and start attaching them to the string, I wanted to talk to you about how much string or how much bias binding you're going to need. If you've got an idea at the start of your project of the space, the width that you want your bunting to fill, that, that you want it to hang in, then I would advise you to buy that amount of bias binding plus half a metre so that you've got 25 centimetre overlap at the beginning to hang up your string 
and 25 centimeter overlap at the end to hang your string. If you're not sure the width that you want to fill because you don't know how many flags you're gonna make out of your fabric or something like that, once you've completed all of your flags, count them up, measure across the top. If you're adding any gap, then obviously make an allowance for that. Add all of those together and then you'll know the length of string that you're going to need. Obviously, I've got an entire roll of bias binding here. So what I'm planning to do is to attach my flags, um, attach the first two, as I've just shown you, take it over to the sewing machine with me and just keep going until I've attached all my flags and then trim it off at the end. OK, so we're back over at the sewing machine now. So I've got my bunting flags attached here and the little bit that we're leaving free at the beginning, we're going to start at this end here and we're going to try and line up this crease here that we made in our bias binding with the edge of our machine foot like we did before lining up the raw edge of our fabric with our machine foot but I just wanted to show you the machine foot because if your binding happens to be narrower than mine if you line it up with the very edge of your foot I've taken the foot off the machine because it's just easier to show you if you line it up with the very edge of your foot then your needle might not hit the bias tape and you might not be able to sew it in that way. Now you can change your stitch width on your machine but if you don't have a machine that enables you to change the stitch width or if you're a beginner and changing the stitch width terrifies you then have a look at your presser foot because there will be other markings on it. You can see there's one here just by where my thumb is and then there's another one here on the metal part. If you just choose a marker that makes sure that your needle still enters the binding and enables everything to be sewn nice and securely together. Whichever marker it is on your machine foot, as long as you keep that consistent the whole time you're sewing, then you shouldn't have any problems. So I'm going to pop my foot back onto my machine and then I'm going to line the bias tape up so that I can start sewing. Okay, so we've got everything lined up and ready to go. I've got the crease of my tape lined up with the edge of my presser foot. I've checked that my needle is going into the tape, which it is, so I know it's going to sew it all nice and securely closed. I'm just going to bring you around the side here for one minute just to show you that at the back, I've got some of the tape sticking out of the back of the foot. The reason for that is because if you look here underneath the presser foot, you can see the jagged teeth of the feed dogs underneath the foot, and it's the feed dogs that help to feed your fabric through your machine. The tape is not covering the feed dogs on this side, but it is covering the feed dogs on this side. So if I start with my tape overlapping, coming out of the back of my foot, it's gonna mean that the tape is not gonna get chewed up by the machine when I'm sewing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing, but I'm gonna do some back stitches first, all the way to um, the end of the tape, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna sew all the way forwards. So I've got my machine on a nice slow speed again for you, and I'm gonna press my back stitch button as when I start, so off we go. So you can see it's coming backwards, out of there, and then I've got to the end. I'm going to just pop my needle down so that I can show you. So if I lift the feed, the um, foot up rather, you can see that I've now gone all the way to the end with my back stitching pretty much. So now I'm going to pop the uh, presser foot lever back down and we're going to carry on sewing and I'm just going to guide that back into the machine. There we go. So I'm going to keep the um, crease here on my tape lined up with the edge of my presser foot. So let's just move you out a little bit there. It's very difficult doing this with one hand. <laughs> What I might do just to show you is I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I'm going to go fast, past my first pin here and then I'll take that out and I'll speed it up a little bit so that you can, uh, you're can you not just watching me sewing in a straight line until we get to the bunting flags. So we're just about to hit the pin there so I shall take it out and then I'm going to go to my uh, speed limiter here and just uh, make it go a little bit quicker. I'm going to stop again to take my pin out and then let's go a bit quicker again. And stop again and now I've come up to the flag. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slow my speed right down again for you. So when you come to your flag, 
just make sure that everything is still sitting nice and straight. If I just go down there, you can see, because this is a white tape, you can see whether or not your fabric is sitting nicely underneath there. So I'm gonna take my pin out and then I'm gonna slow down again for you and I'm just gonna guide it through the machine. And what you will see is, as you come to the flag, it will become a little bit easier because now you've got your both feed dogs underneath your foot covered. So just keep going nice straight stitch until you reach your pin which I'm just covering here so we'll stop and we'll take the pin out and then we'll just check that everything is lined up again nice and straight here and we'll carry on sewing if you need to leave your needle in and lift your foot up at any point just to make sure that everything is nice and flat then you can do that like we did when we turned around the uh, corner of the point as we were sewing that so just keep going until we're pretty much at the end of our flag. And then I'm gonna stop and we've come up to the next one, which you can see is flipped over. So I'm gonna flip it the right way. That's because I've got my tape over here. So let me just move my tape down there and then we'll make sure that everything is sitting nice and flat before we carry on sewing. So there we go. Again, I'm doing this with one hand because I'm holding the camera, but uh, hopefully you get the gist of it. So we're going into the tape bit there, and then we're coming back to the flag. <clears throat> so we're going into our second flag here. I'm just going to stop because I feel like I'm pushing that a little bit. There we go. Make sure it's nice and flat all the way down. So we'll keep going. And then we're coming up to our pin. <laughs> and then once we get to our pin, I'm gonna stop because now we've obviously not got any more flags here because I only pinned two on before I came to the sewing machine. So I want to talk to you about that now. So we're gonna fold that in half, like so. So now you've got the next part of your crease. You can do this with two hands. You've got the next part of your crease that you can start popping a flag into. So I'm just gonna take hold of my flag here and then I'm not gonna be able to pin this because I've only got one hand at the moment. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop it in there with a pin and then you're gonna keep repeating this process each time you come up to your pin on the last flag that you've got pinned on and then we're gonna attach another one until you've used all your flags. So let me just turn the camera off and I'll pin this in place and you can see what I mean. Okay, so I've now pinned this. I've put two pins in this time because we're over at the sewing machine now and things are not quite as flat. So that will keep those in place a little bit easier. The other thing that you will notice is um, when I was sewing the flags together, this part of the machine looked different. I had my extension table on, which um, was like a sort of a clear plastic um, part here, which went all the way out. Um, the reason I had that on before um, and not now is because before I was sewing flat things. Now I'm sewing something curved. So I've gone back to having the um, original kind of uh, free arm cover on the machine so that I've got something that the bias tape can hang over here. Um, it, it, it's just personal preference for me. I prefer to have this when I'm sewing things that are not really flat and the extension table is better if you're doing flat work and quilting and things like that. So I'm just gonna carry on with this to show you just make sure you can see what I'm doing. So again, I'm just gonna take that pin out first of all, and then I'm going to carry on with my nice slow stitch under the machine so that you can see what I'm doing. And also you can hear me if I use a slow stitch. You may have noticed that when I was sewing a little bit quicker, the, uh, the machine gets a lot louder and it would be difficult for you to hear what I'm saying. So there we are. We're coming to the end of that flag now. And then I've left a gap if you want to measure this gap, then you can do, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's handmade bunting. It doesn't matter if, uh, if everything's not quite uniform, does it? And so we're coming on to the next flag now. I'm just going to stop before the pin so that I can take the pin out. There we go. Take the pin out. And then again, just make sure that everything is sitting flat. Um, and I'm gonna stop about halfway along the flag 
to pin my next one in. So we'll just keep going. And I'm not pushing again, I'm just, if I was pushing, it'd be doing this. I'm just guiding it through the machine. And I'll stop there and then I'll pin my next flag in. So remember to crease it before you add the flag. And this is all you need to do. You need to carry on in this way until you've attached all of your flags. So I'm going to do that now. And then once I'm attaching the last flag, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you so that I can show you how to finish off your string at the end. Okay, so I'm on my last flag here. So I've just stopped um, just a little bit before the end and I have folded my tape in half all the way down to the bottom and then I've just popped some pins in and you can see I'm at the end of my tape there. So I'm just gonna leave my speed turned up because I've been doing it a little bit quicker um, because you don't need to hear me talking over it. So I'm gonna carry on stitching all the way to the end and then I will show you how I'm gonna finish off right at the very end. So let's go. I'm just stopping again as I reach my pins and taking those out. And I'm keeping the crease lined up with the edge of my presser foot as I go along. And there's my last pin, so I'm going to take that out and I'm going to slow my speed right down again. Obviously, you would normally control your speed with your foot pedal. Um, and I'm just gonna go all the way down to the end until I see the tape disappear underneath the foot. And then I'm gonna stop, and then I'm gonna do some back stitches with my back stitch button, just to secure, and then go forwards again. And then I'm going to take my needle out. If you don't have a needle up and down button, turn your hand wheel. And then I'm going to lift my presser foot lever up and I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to trim my threads and we're done. And there you have it. Beautifully sewn, professional looking bunting. You've got double sided flags. You've got lovely points on the end of your flags. Your tape is all nice and neat. Um, you've got gaps between these, which are not particularly uniform, but it doesn't matter because it is handmade and it is made with love. And that is the main thing. I have had an outfit change, um, as you can probably see. Um, I'm filming this on a different day because um, it took a lot longer than I thought it would to film this, um, partly because I was being a bit picky about the things that I was saying and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, I have finished the bunting and I'm now looking forward um, to the best part of making things for um, other people, which is, of course, gifting them to them. So I'm looking forward to gifting it to my daughter. So I hope that you have enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Um, please do let me know what you think and let me know if there is anything else that you would like to see below. Um, as I say, it did take me a lot longer than I thought it would to film this, but I have really enjoyed putting it together and I have tried to make it as clear as I possibly can for you. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope that it's useful. If you do uh, manage to make yourself some bunting, then please do share that with me and let me know. If you are on Instagram, um, you can find me as Stitch Create Love on Instagram. And if you do make anything from any of my tutorials, um, then use the hashtag Stitch Create Love. And, uh, and then I can see and everybody else can see what you've been making and our community can continue to grow. So thank you very much for spending some time with me today. If you did enjoy it and you like what you see, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to this channel to show your support. Um, I will see you again very shortly. I'm hoping to film um, probably a slightly shorter podcast um, next week. So uh, hopefully you'll join me for that too. Until then, happy crafting, happy sewing. I hope you're well and uh, I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye-bye.